All right, guys. Welcome to uh, Calibrated Confidence Corner, BTFT TV. I'm gonna keep it a little short tonight. We'll just kind of go over, uh, you know, quickly. Some we'll take a look at the bonds after the ECB announcement this morning. Um, take a look at the two-year. I just wanted to kind of highlight some of this uh, price line action that was going on after the market. Uh, Tsang was kind of touching on it earlier when he did his mailbag uh, around 4:30, and it was it was pretty volatile. Uh, PCLN ended up, you know, spiking up. Slamming down into the 950 range, coming all the way back up over a G, and then started, you know, slowly tripping back down. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, touch on some Tesla information, and I'm just going to show you guys a few charts from the ECB that I usually show. You know, the daily liquidity stuff, the uh, you know current accounts, um, FR, Federal Reserve Bank in New York's so FX swaps, and then we'll pretty much wrap it up. Uh, I'm going to keep it short tonight, just because um, tomorrow morning uh, I'm going to have Peter Tischer on from uh, TF Markets. He, over the course of his career, he's traded over about a trillion dollars in derivatives. So he knows what he's talking about, and I'm going to just kind of do some preparation. We can talk to him about Sovereign CDS and uh, perhaps get a better understanding of what he sees going on in Europe. Um, particularly, I'm kind of interested to see what his view was about the ECB's rate decision this morning. Um, I wasn't really expecting a rate cut after all the bullshit that we've heard coming out of there. You'd think everything was hunky-dory, so... It'd be interesting, you know, I was kind of j cracking some jokes about it this morning, but, you know, cue the Nigel Farage, uh, you know, spazzing. So, uh, also tomorrow, you know, we got a few things. Let me just uh, pull up the economic calendar here. There's uh, some Canadian employment coming out, or that came out that I want to highlight. Give me some feedback on Twitter, guys. How'd you do today? Everybody, uh... You guys been playing the short game or what? Anybody decide to... I, I, I'm like hesitant to mention it because I know it's been all over the place, but anybody deal with Twitter today? Nothing from you bastards, eh? Maybe it'll take a minute. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. Let me... uh. Let's just take a look at a few things here. All right, guys, the purple's a two-year note, and uh, in the background we got the S&P 500. Uh, this was this morning. The ECB came out uh, just before 8 o'clock with their announcement that they cut their benchmark rate from 50 to 25 bips. But earlier in the morning, um, whether it was a leak or not, I mean, it obviously is because it always seems to be as of late. Uh, we had a nice, nice spike in the two and then... You know, the ES started, took up, and then it just started fading it up through the morning. So it's kind of a mixed day, a little bit weird. We'll see what happens if we get a bounce back tomorrow, or if this is the, you know, just the beginning of what's to come. I'm not really sure what to expect out of it. Also, uh, yeah, crude still remaining relatively flat. I've seen a lot of people kind of highlighting what was going on in the currency market today also. Um, I'm not going to comment on that, but you guys can swing over and check out uh, uh Blake Morrow over at Pips are. He usually has a pretty good morning webcast that I'll listen to when you know I'm trying to get a feed on what's going on out there in the in the FX markets in the morning. Here's uh, ECB. This is their benchmark allotments. This is what they uh, you know against what they actually say they're going to be allotting. This is uh, what they actually do. You can kind of see the drawback. We're starting to get a more you know higher end moves here. Couple it with you know what's going on in the deposit facility remaining low. Current account balance you know minus this little this little hiccup down here. Yeah, fuck it. You know, right in this range. Still continuing the downtrend that's been going on since late August. And then uh, just kind of the changes in it, you can see you know as you're looking at a daily change in both of them, you know, things are getting a little more a little more active. You can see how it, you know how it was back in the earlier crisis era or the late part of the crisis, and then you know everything seems to be honky dory now, and this is when they're cutting rates. So we'll see what goes on, and then uh, just the FX swaps. This is, I mean, this is expected just because they ended up taking different routes after this was blown out. And I'd highlighted this on floating path. Um, one of the senators was getting some feedback from Bernanke behind the scenes, you know, behind closed doors, they like to say, so they sound all important, and. Um, 
he was saying that Bernanke said that they wouldn't have any involvement in Europe. And if you look at the purpose of the Federal Reserve Bank and New York's FX swaps, it's in order to supply stability for the area by issuing dollars because it's a reserve currency and it, it protects the interests of the U.S. So literally, um, you know, a week later when they publish this data, uh, it comes out that that day, you know, is even though Bernanke said he wasn't going to get involved in it, that was the day they blew, you know, showed this huge blow up in the chart. Right here in December. So, they're obviously taking other avenues in order to support what's going on over there, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much just going to leave it at that, and we'll kind of see how some analysis goes out. I'm going to leave it up to Peter tomorrow, and we'll talk with him and get his view on things. Really quick, also uh, tomorrow, Canadian Canadian employment numbers. They're looking at a rise in their employment rate, full-time employment's going to look for, you know, quite a quite a dramatic drop, but it kind of seems to be in line with what they usually have. You know, these huge fall-offs. It's, it's pretty volatile. So we'll see what goes on with Canadian employment. Then it'll be worth keeping an eye on. They're looking for it to go from 23.4 down to 6.26, and they're looking for their rate to increase about 20 bps. So we still, I mean, we have, there's still some major news coming out this week. So there's, you know, for you guys that enjoy kind of flipping shit and doing, you know, the short-term interday trades and the flipping like that, it's, you probably get some volatility here, but you got to be quick. You got to get those moves early. Um, and just even watching Twitter today, I didn't even deal with, you know, looking at the 100 and the 500 lots. I just put in, you know, a thousand lot limit to see what was printing, and that seemed quite excessive. So then I went to 8,000. That still wasn't enough, and I ended up cutting it at like 10,000 was the lot limits that I was, you know, filtering in order to see coming through just because there was such, it, it was huge. I mean, that demand was insane. And aside from some of the delay on NICE's Open Book Ultra and, you know, the issue that was going on with the OTC market that actually started at about 6 this morning, um, you know, I don't know if that was the same causation or not. Uh, that wasn't really highlighted specifically, but at the same time, you know, it's just a bizarre coincidence, so you never know. We'll see what happens if anybody ends up telling us more information about what was going on there. Aside from that, it seems like, you know, NICE, for the most part, pulled it off. Um, it seems like Twitter played it well. Uh, early investors and people that were supporting it seem to have been rewarded thus far. Uh, we'll see what continues going on for the next month or so and definitely see what happens when Q1 results come out and see, you know, see what this company is doing as far as the money. What else we got, guys? Let me see if I can pull up... Um, I think that platform's gonna go. You bastard. Let's take a look at what else just we got here on the calendar quick. Like I said, again in the morning, uh, just so you know at eight thirty or uh, eight o'clock before non farm payrolls, I'm gonna have Peter T shirt from TF Market Advisors on and you know we'll just be talking about sovereign sovereign CDS, maybe taking a look at what's going on in Europe, kinda get his thoughts on the debt markets and whatnot. He uh so I'm gonna kinda save a lot of this for you know, first thing in the morning. Thursday, Friday. So we've got typical releases for non-farm coming out. Canada's got employment information coming out. And then after the close, which I don't know how people are going to be playing this, but China's got their inflation and production information coming out. So it'll kind of lead into um, into the nice weekend. we got Russian news. Most of this, so it's, I mean, it's it's key information, but none of it really seems to be like it's going to be critical, at least by, you know, the highlighted standards of what's going on in the, econ you know, trading, trading economics uh, ranking system, but, you know, it's worth keeping an eye on the markets of these nations, at least, see what's going on in the indices in Canada, and definitely, obviously, looking at their bonds. Uh, I'll keep a track on that through Thompson 1, and probably watch that early in the morning. And outside of that, guys, if you don't have any feedback on Twitter, um... You know, there's really not much else going on tonight. It was kind of a dry day today. Like I said, I was just kind of watching Tesla. Um, you know, nothing really too insane going on there. Facebook, you know, typical shenanigans with the UBS market makers. Uh, Spy, typical shenanigans with, you know, the Chicago Exchange. So, um, really nothing new. You know, uh, I was actually going through some of the new options spreadsheet that I got my hands on, and... Uh, you know, we'll look for next week maybe to construct something going on with these other firms. I'll let you guys know who I'm going to go with and, you know, we'll put the trade on and, you know, we'll have some fun with this. 
Oh yeah, Tesla and PCL. What the hell was I thinking? Um, maximize this one. All right, here we go again. So PCL line after hours, um, the earnings came in at 17.33. The estimate was 16.21. Uh, you know, beat down, took a spike up, beat down, kind of came back, and now they're floating around. You know, typical fade, but it was it, it was a friggin' volatile move, man. There was a lot of action going on there, and if you take a look at the volume, it's not really anything intense until you know the rebound. So the support seems to be you know right at the G level. That kind of seems to be you know where everybody's popping in and pushing shit up. So. You know, look for support there. It's definitely there's definitely something to that psychological level, the round numbers with the 100s and you know the thousands, and then Tesla also. You know, they're trying to. You know, I, it doesn't matter what they do. They're not gonna. They're not gonna win people over, and that's fine. Um, but they were coming out talking about that. You know, the um, the driver. The, the Tesla had contacted the driver in Tennessee, and the guy's just saying that you know basically the car saved his life and that this wasn't a, you know, this was a part of an accident. This wasn't, you know, a completely spontaneous fire. And, you know, Tesla can say that and some people come out and say, like, ah, oh, you know, they're just covering their asses, you know, they're fluffing it up, and, you know, maybe so. Uh, maybe there is some truth to it, maybe there's not. Um, the bottom line is, is you got to put it in perspective with the rest of the records about what's going on with car accidents and shit like that. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think the Volt was a lot worse. And, um, you know, there's definitely scenarios where firms, you know, had absolutely horrifying scenarios with vehicles that people just... They understood that it was part of something new, and that's the way it goes. And if, you know, this thing's blowing up on these accidents, yeah, it sucks, but I mean, what are you supposed to do? Is everything just always supposed to work perfectly every single time you do something, and if it's just not going to work perfect, don't even bother trying? Like, yeah, it sucks. The guy didn't die. The guy admitted it. Um, and there's been two other scenarios where, you know, obviously it was a horrible video. It's horrible shit to see when you're looking at a car engine burning on fire. I've never had anybody look at it in a calming nature, so, I mean, naturally it's going to be a an emotional shock event when they show you this shit in HD. So, I don't know what to think about it, though. It's like we were saying the other day. You know, it's it's double what I think the intrinsic value is. Um, I was talking, or I was taking a look earlier at it going down to 124s. Let me pull it up here correctly. Actually, I think I got the chart on the other one. Hold on, guys. Oops. Give me a second here. Which one did I put it? I can't remember. Okay, yeah, it is on here. Yeah, let me do this. I uh, will delete this bastard. All right, let's blow this guy up. Let's blow this zoom out. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, I just threw a really, really basic. Uh, you know, like I said, I don't really use a lot of technical analysis, but I just kind of threw up a really basic uh, Fibonacci trend. You know, from this basic run up here and. What I've got highlighted, let me fix some of this mess so it's not so crazy to look at. Um, you guys can see up on side here, I got the blue circle. This is pretty much what I'm seeing. You know, I'll probably be a supporter on the 124, 73 range. You know, you look at the volume that you've got in here, you know, at least in this in this area, it just kind of seems like, you know, we'll come down and, you know, group back up. So I'm going to be looking for it to be coming down here, you know, at least by, by the time our shit expires, it's going to be down in this range. So we might just have to eat a, you know, eat a small loss and then just deal around with it and catch the next bull unless this is part of just the Elliott Wave move, you know, and we're going to have a check here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then down. But it's worth keeping an eye. I mean, this is uh, aside from the basic fact that you know Tesla is one of these new companies that's coming out here. This is also you know pretty much a case study in human psychology. Um, I think all of this stuff is the way that we're pegging social media and stuff like that. It's it's really just one big advertising platform. But at the same time, there's there's this intangible aspect of the the the, the ability to connect humans and the the ability to create value just out of providing that connection. Um, you look at what happened with Sanglucci, what happened with BTFT TV, you know, the way we've all kind of come to know each other, you know, through Twitter. Um, that's the intangible value that gets added in. That's that's a premium that's, you know, you, you can't price it. 
And this is this is part of the issue with finance is everybody wants to think it's a science because everybody wants to feel like they know what they're doing, but it's really just an art. Um, there is a lot of it that you can use. Uh, you know, if you're just looking at basic things like you know debt and equity and your ability to actually run a profitable business, uh, you can get an intrinsic value for that. But there's always going to be this added extra premium, especially now in a market where it's pomo action, and where you have scenarios like what we had with what was it like 15 Tuesdays in a row that you just didn't short because it was always an up day. I mean, you don't you don't get shit like that unless you know there's there's shit that people are seeing and then it becomes self you know uh, self uh, fulfilling prophecy after a little while. And so, you know, we saw the hubris, and then people started questioning it. Shit was breaking down. Now we're just getting negative news. You're not getting Elon out there talking about SpaceX and the launches that are happening and the videos coming out. And you're not getting him interviewed on Bloomberg and the write-ups being done and all this information. So it's it's really not in the news anymore, and the algos are focusing on other things. And then when Tesla is in the news, it's because of, you know, shock and awe, you know, net negative news dealing with shit being on fire. And then the the bad publicity that it could cause for the firm, and this is what the computers end up reading in a negative way, and it causes them to stall. This is this is very typical of the way that the machines work. So, like I said, I'm looking for that 2473 range. Uh, you know, I mean, fuck, give me like give me like a, a two dollar margin of error on that. You know, so we'll look at 12273 or 12673. Uh, at least by the end of November, and then we'll see a turnaround. You know, going in through December. Uh, we'll get the turnaround, we'll get the Christmas rally, it'll run back through into Q1, and we'll continue to do it. So make a note, mark it, uh, you know, November 7th. This is just, this is pattern recognition, guys. This isn't, you don't have to run some proprietary model and sell it for $30 a month to people in order to put this information out there. That's old Wall Street. That's old man Wall Street. New man Wall Street is just sharing it when you're a real trader because you don't need that kind of money because that's not your fucking business model. This is just something you're doing. There is a level of altruism here for an ex, you know to an extent because we actually get you know it's good to get the feedback from you guys because you're telling us that you know you enjoy you know watching what we're doing being a part of it you know get involved in it asking questions and uh, this is something I would have loved to have you know when I first started out having people that were willing to you know come out and talk to you and not take advantage and you know screw you over so um Probably what we'll continue to do too, at least at least on my end, my goal for you guys is I want to continue to build out, you know, some Excel models for you, and not to give them to you to use to invest, but to give them to you to use to learn from, you know, on a very basic level. Uh, it's something that you know is a basic building block. That if you guys want to add complexity to it and just kind of, you know, dick around and you know see what other people are using, you know, put that out there for you for a different aspect of you know interactive learning with the way that new media is, because there's no reason that you should. You know, to have people telling you what's going on, you should be able to learn and figure it out and come along and provide feedback because finance isn't something that is a science. Nobody always knows what's going on, and if you think you know everything, that's when you're at your most vulnerable and damaging state. So it's it's nice to, you know, be able to interact and actually teach things and put yourself in the hot seat. So, you know, this is what we want out of you guys. So you got to keep giving us feedback like you're doing, and, you know, I just want to put that out there for you. You know, it's just to remind you that we know that that's why it's here. We're not, we're not selling out. We're not changing anything around, but um, this is just kind of prep as we come out with new parts of the, you know, what's going on with BTFT TV and the other networks that are, you know, being built behind the scenes that are going to end up coming together, so, but I'll let, you know, check in some of the other guys tell you about that stuff when the time's right. Um, you know, let's just take a look. I'll just give you guys just for kicks. I mean, I don't really give a fuck what, you know, you guys that are older than me or have been doing this longer than me don't really give a shit what I think about it, but it seems like right now with the with the down day that we had in the spy today, you know, this kind of jives with what was going on back in mid September. Uh, you're probably looking at like the 18th uh, with that little top there, and then that four day down run. Um, this is just part of the check. You know, it comes up. This is what I was talking about. How we're getting into a more volatile channel now. Um, it's not so tight of a channel like what was being highlighted maybe a year, year and a half ago. So um, we're going to probably continue with this bull chop, you know, a little sideways here, and. You know, maybe we'll get a few down days going into the middle of November. I couldn't see it getting, re honestly, I couldn't see it getting below, you know, 168s, 167s, uh, maybe in a month. And we'll, uh, you know, as we work on the options analyzer and get this stuff a little bit more robust, uh, just to make sure everything's running smooth, um, we'll start putting this on live and we'll just start scanning them and running them through. So as the week comes up, I know what... Uh, 
Noel for Albeda. Uh, I know he's got an entire watch list that's constantly changing because I'm getting DM'd with it every time I'm on air, and I love it. Um, give us some feedback from you guys, too. And uh, what we'll do is, like, as a community, we'll kind of take a look at whatever the most popular one is that everybody individually suggests. And, uh, you know, just take a look at what's going on and just kind of play along. You know, teach you guys some things. You can teach us some things. I know people had some feedback about, you know, what was going on with the show last night with Lefty. Uh, and there's always different ways to do things. And it's critical that, you know, within your legal standards, depending on, you know, what you're actually doing out there, who you're working for, uh, you know, that you provide some feedback and let us know what's going on. So... With that said, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Enjoy the rest of the night. Um, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, right here, I'm going to be with uh, Peter Tischer from TF Markets uh, talking CDS, and we're going to talk you know, probably European bonds and just kind of ask the guy a few questions. I'm kind of interested in who he is, what he's done, um, you know, uh, and, you know what, the, what, what he feels after his experience could possibly be the, the net the net benefits to a society of having something, you know, such as a, a CDS market where you're having, you know, insurance on credit. Uh, there's definitely scenarios where people can borrow money and create value from it, and that's a benefit. And in order to get the most benefit, you have to reach the most people, but when you do that, you also drag in some of the um, unfriendlies, you know, people that can't pay their shit. And sometimes that ends up causing a draw and making it difficult on others, so I'm just... I'd be curious to kind of just get his get his input on some of these more you know the esoteric kind of ideas about what we're you know what's going on in finance and these different types of products and you know the benefits of society from it. So, with that said, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for the support. I hope everybody had a decent day today and you didn't get burned by what was going on. Uh, we'll take a look at non-farm payrolls tomorrow before the morning. Actually, why don't we just do it live? Let me take a look. You know, sometimes I'm, I wonder if I'm the only one who looks at data that comes out from the U.S. as uh, as credible as you look at Chinese data. Because you just, you never know, because it, it's never, it's never the real information. Like, people are always asking, like, what do you think the real unemployment number is? Nobody can tell you what they honestly think the real unemployment number is without a 100% accurate analysis of what's going on in the world. And when you're asking somebody what they think it is, it's just from their perspective. So, I mean, what does it matter? If you, if you don't understand the person's perspective and the broad view that they have or whatever kind of view that they have, the information that you're going to glean from asking somebody what they think the real unemployment number is, is is fucking useless. And the fact that people act like that matters and they try to make it all scientific is just even more bullshit. And this is kind of like, you know, those evangelical guys that you used to see on TV that would bullshit you with all their, oh, holy, holy, and, you know, all that nonsense. That's kind of what a lot of this shit reminds me of. That's why, I, you know, I bash on a lot of these fake guys that are out here, you know, that aren't taking on any real risk and they're calling themselves risk managers. And the only model that they're using is something that deals with Boilinger bands on a one-month, six-month basis with, you know, some exponential moving averages. And aside from that, there's no other comments and just acts like a complete doorknob and, you know, pretends that they're doing something new even though they're just perpetrating old Wall Street. And this is, this is the problem with it is it's just these old guys. But that's okay. You know, I'm going to be an old guy too someday. And hopefully I'll know to step aside and maybe I'll have some fun and just kind of fuck around with the new guys. <laughs> uh, Non-farm payrolls. Let's get back to business here real quick. Just show on the road, damn it. Looking weaker. And we've had uh, two, two down reportings. Seems like that's uh, about all you get before you get an up report. Down, up. Oh, here's four in a row. But on the lower level, it doesn't seem to happen. When you're under 150, it seems like, you know, you just get the two downsides and then an up. So we could probably look at a range of, you know, 136, 135s. And it wouldn't surprise me to have a beat. Uh, you know, everybody wants to take a negative view on what's going on right now just so we can keep perpetuating this, uh, you know, this phony level of confidence in what's going on in this horseshit market that we have. Um, but, I mean, you still got to trade it either way. It doesn't matter what what you feel is actually going on out there. You got to trade the market that's in front of you. You can't trade the market that you want to see. You have to trade the one that you do see. So that's that's part of the issue here is you, you need to have a, a real view. But, I mean, does it matter? Does it matter if I have a real view on Tesla at 70 when, you know, at $70 when it's running from 120s all the way up to 194s? 
Maybe. I mean, if you got the gall and the and the you know the back capital in order to sustain you know a potential short position from there and just slowly build it at a higher you know average level, but you're gonna trade what you see here. I'm talking to traders, not just everybody, because there's investment guys that can do things, you know, a lot differently, depending on how much cash flows they're dealing with. So, all right, I'm 25 minutes in, guys. We're good. Uh, enjoy the rest of the night. Hit me up on Twitter if you got any questions about anything, and uh, yeah, look for me tomorrow morning with Peter. And I'm still gonna do a show tomorrow night too. Uh, we'll come back and probably what we'll do is we'll we'll fuck around with like a weekly option for next week, and we'll take a look at maybe what I could set up with Tessa, and I'll do it on my own. And then, um, you know, I'll just let you guys kind of lay into it and, you know, we'll go from there. Because I only learn by swimming in the deep end. I'm very kinesthetic like that. So I can take the tweet heat. Maybe not being the smartest some of you guys with the option stuff. So, yeah. And give me some feedback, whatever else you guys feel like, uh, you know, taking a look into. Uh, maybe we can find some futures guys that could, uh, you know, help some of you that are getting into futures. Maybe kind of dealing with a different way of analyzing, you know, ways to play it. Uh but let me know what you guys want. I'm not. I can't just sit here and pretend like I know what the street wants. You guys got to tell me what you want so I can produce it. Because it, it can't get too ivory tower here where I'm thinking like, oh, they're they're just gonna want to know this. I mean, there's certain things where that comes up, but you know, you can't just. I'm not trying to produce pop material here. You know, I'm trying to give you guys something of value and shit you want. So keep giving us feedback and uh, yeah, keep giving us the support. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Uh, peace out. I'll see you at 8 in the morning with Peter right here, PTFD TV.